Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing how to create the Darksaber effect that you might have seen in the animated series like Star Wars The Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels, and most recently in The Mandalorian. So I have After Effects open and I imported this clip of me spinning around this wooden prop Darksaber that I made out of a $5 piece of one x four. Yeah, look at me go. I'm doing my Ray boulder training. But okay, so I'm gonna start at the front of my clip, go up to layer, and hit new solid. I'm gonna call this white saber. Let's make sure that it's white. Make comp size, hit okay. Okay, the screen's completely white, that's okay. I'm gonna come over here and turn off the white saber solid for now so we can see what we're doing. And then I'm going to zoom in on my clip so that the blade of the saber fills up the whole screen. And I like to make sure that it's on full quality so that I can see more clearly. I have all the pixels and all the information in there so that I can line up the mask more evenly. But so with the white saber solid selected, I'm gonna go up to here and hit the pen tool or you can just hit G on the keyboard for the shortcut. And I'm gonna create a mask around the base of my blade first. I do three points and then three points at the tip of the blade. And then I come over here on the white solid, hit M on the keyboard and it'll bring up the mask path and then hit the stopwatch. And now this is where the long and tedious part starts. I'm gonna go through frame by frame and redraw this mask over my saber blade. It requires some patience. Like I said, takes some time, but if you put on, I don't know, a good podcast, some good music, you can kind of just zone out because this is pretty mindless work. It can be kind of relaxing in a way if you enjoy editing and doing effects. But there is something that I do that I feel like speeds up the process a little bit. What I do is I jump ahead, maybe like five, frames and then I just reposition the mask roughly over the blade and I'll do this through the whole entire clip of uh, where I want my effect just creating a rough mask first and it makes me feel like I'm getting more work done quicker and then it, it does make it easier because then I'll show you why one second so yeah, I just went through every five frames or so and created a rough mask and I'll show you what that looks like. I'll turn on the solid. So you can see the white solid is following generally in the direction of where your blade's gonna be. And I like to do that for the whole clip because it's a little quicker, that first pass over. And then I come in frame by frame and zoom all the way in and fine tune these edges and just clean it up instead of having to just redraw this for every new movement that I make. I found it just to be a little quicker. So I'm gonna go through, create my rough mask first, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, now that I have the rough mask done, I'm going to switch the quality to quarter, turn on the white solid, and as you can see, the white solid isn't completely stuck to the blade. It's moving around, it's not on every frame, so I'm going to turn this back off, Go back to full quality. And now, since I have a guide with my rough mask, I can come in here and clean up everything and actually make sure that it's matched up. But okay, so I'm gonna go through and mask this out completely frame by frame to match it up perfectly. And I will see you guys in a few hours. Let me see how long that will take. All right, so I finished fine tuning my mask. It took about an hour and a half, a little quicker than I thought it would be, so that's good. All right, it looks pretty good. You can see all the spots where it was jumping out and it wasn't sticking to the blade. It's fixed now. Okay, there is one more thing that I need to do with the mask really quick. There's 
a few parts where the blade goes behind me. So you can see right here, it's going across my head. So I'll put this back to full, turn off the solid. And what I'm gonna do is bring it down, bring the mask down to meet my head. Let's follow the motion blur. It should be good enough. And then I'm going to duplicate this mask and then drag it on the other side of my head and then just finish off. Okay, and there you go. And now I'll just do that for a few of the other frames to where it goes behind my body. All right, so I finished that up. It was only about four frames, so it didn't take long at all. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is create the saber core. So I'm gonna go over to the white solid and duplicate it four times. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna select all of those solids, hit F to bring up the mask feather, and then I'm gonna go down each one of these and increase the feather, uh, starting at five and going up in increments. So do five for the first one, 10 for the second, 20 for the third, do 40 for the fourth one, and then for the last one, we'll do 80. Okay, I can close all of those. And now you can see it added a glow to the solid. Okay, now we're gonna create the black saber core. So, for the very top white solid, I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm going to rename this to dark saber core. Then I'm gonna go up to, while I have this uh, solid selected, I'm gonna go up to layer, go into solid settings, rename that again. Okay, and then I'm going to make this not completely black because I think it looks a little too fake to be a little bit more realistic. Like if there was some light and glow coming through, possibly. Yeah, I just like to add a little gray in there, just not completely black. I think it looks a little bit more fitting for the scene. All right, now let's see what that looks like with the glow and the black saber core. Okay. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Um, let me see. The feather on the dark saber core, I bring it to about 10. Okay, now for the last and final step, the dark saber has some like white crackles down here, like if it's some energy down at the bottom of the sword. So the way I create that is I duplicate the saber core one more time. I'll rename this one energy. Okay. So I'm going to go to the beginning of my clip. I'm going to shut off all the solids and then lock all of them except the energy one. I'm going to open up the mask and then delete it because I'm going to create a new one that's in just the bottom part of the blade. So open up the pen tool and I'm just going to make four points down here along the bottom portion. All right, open up the mass path, hit the stopwatch, and now I'm gonna go through again, frame by frame, and animate this rectangle to follow along the bottom of the sword. But this will be quicker because it doesn't have to be as accurate um, because it'll be inside the glow and everything, and you'll see in a little bit why it doesn't have to be as accurate. But So I'm gonna do that really quick. Okay, so I got to a part to where the blade turns to a certain angle to where you can't see the bottom of it anymore. It's only gonna be for a few frames while I'm spinning the saber around. So like for this frame right here, instead of splitting the solid or creating a new mask or anything, since it's only a few frames, what I'll do is just select the whole entire mask and just drag it off frame so it's not there. Go to the next one, then drag it back in. That's, that'll just be faster and it'll just keep everything cleaner and make it less complicated. 
Okay, and also for when the motion blur is so much on the blade to where it's just a wide streak, like it'll be for these frames, you can just drag off the mask to this out of the frame as well until you can see the blade clearly again. So here, when I can see it again, I'll drag it back in and continue doing the mask. All right, so I have that mask finished now. I'll go back to the beginning of my clip. I can turn on all of the solids and then unlock them all. And then what I'm gonna do to the energy solid, I'm going to add fractal noise. And for the settings, the fractal type, I will set to terrain. The noise type will be spline. The contrast, I set to 497. The brightness to negative 166. I leave the allow HDR results. Complexity, I leave it at six. And then for the evolution, I will keyframe it. And then for the length of my clip, I've found it's about 15 seconds. I start at zero, go to the end of the clip and bring it to 20. I found that to be about right for me. Okay. Then the opacity, I bring it to 3% and change the blending mode to add. And then finally, I will change the feather to 25. All right, and now after doing all that, you can see the energy strip down here towards the bottom of the blade. And I'll play that back, see what it looks like. And there we go. All right, I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I like it. All right. So just add some sound effects in there and a little bit of color grading and you have your final effect.